We say farewell to our two friends in the motel lounge and start off our, our next night, camping at the ghost town of Gagnon. I have not been able to find any kind of accommodation in that area. We'll be on our own. I don't know about you, but my idea of a ghost town comes from American Western movies. I can see myself sleeping on the floor of an old barn. But I've heard there's not much which still remains. I guess we'll see. It's kind of exciting, actually. It's going down to 18 degrees tonight, so we should be comfortable enough. Crossing over to the east bank of the Manic Wagon, we'll leave Manic 5. The Daniel Johnson Dam is absolutely awesome close up. It's massive. We lose the pavement now, but the road surface seems pretty hard. There's not a lot of stones being thrown up, thank goodness. Black spruce is becoming much more common now, resulting in a kind of a see-through forest. We're starting to enter the taiga, the boreal forest. We're very close to Lake Manicouagan here and we see a way down to the water. The 70 kilometer diameter lake was created by the Daniel Johnson Dam in the crater of a 215 million year old impact crater caused by a meteorite which was five kilometers in diameter. It can easily be seen from space and is called the Eye of Quebec. It's the sixth largest confirmed impact crater on Earth.
As we approach Gagnon, asphalt again appears. On the southern edge of town, we start to look for a place to camp. There aren't a lot of obvious possibilities. So here's our little home away from home. We're just outside the town of Gagnon. I'm gonna go take a look now, do a little walk, do a little exploration. This is part of a, the subdivision, I guess, that was here. It's just to the west of the town, on the west side of the highway. And a couple of RVs are parked here, but Nobody appears to be in them for the moment. So we're going to head across the highway and see what there is on the other side. On this side, there are some other plots of land that look as if there were houses there. This was a mining community, had up to 4,000 people at its height, working in a iron ore mine, I think it was. Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, this part of the reason the road, the 389 highway was built was to surface this place. But the place went uh, bust before they were able to do that because the price of iron ore went down and didn't make it profitable. So the company actually picked up the whole town and moved it out, leaving very little behind. There's a small stream or river that runs behind our campsite. car over there in the distance. Yeah, sewer pipe. Middle of nowhere. There. In the middle of nowhere. Still headed toward the highway. <laughs> a little to the north of where we went off the highway is the beginning of the boulevard here that's mentioned in the history book. History pages about uh, the downtown Main Street having a boulevard. The main downtown street was uh, Highway 389. Mm. 
Oh yeah, there's some buildings up ahead. Uh -huh. In here, side streets go off the main road into nothing. Let's just see the curve. Somebody's there's a white uh, concrete curve there. Well, I guess there's people here. That's some sort of a base for construction or something. Okay, we've headed, walked across the road now, and we're heading back south along the highway. You see more large driveway areas here. This could be a gas station or something before, but now there's a ditch there. And in behind, it's like all kinds of trees. I thought that the, from the description I had read that uh, most of the village was on the east side of the road, but it looks like that's wrong. It's like, actually it's, on the west side. <laughs> 